and we are very focused on the threat of elections workers and voters being intimidated. Unfortunately, there are people out there who, again, think it is in their best interest to intimidate folks. But if people are going to go, as our election workers leave after 16, 18 hour days defending democracy, counting the votes, and have their picture taken and their license, the picture of their license plate taken, that is unacceptable and it has to stop. That was Bill Gates, the former chair of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, outlining threats to midterm election workers last fall in Arizona. It wasn't the first time that he dealt with such threats. He was repeatedly harassed by supporters of Donald Trump and even received death threats for refusing to delay the certification of the 2020 election results. Gates has now revealed that he was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, and we sat down with him to discuss the personal toll of protecting America's democracy. When you refuse to overturn the results or to throw out the results, what, what happened? How did they come after you? All my colleagues received death threats, and those uh, Republicans who we had stood beside for years, others whose campaigns we had worked on, they, they fell silent, and they didn't defend us as we were all accused of having rigged the election. What did that feel like to suddenly not just be criticized, but have people threatening your life, bringing your family into this? I felt betrayed. I really did. The death threats were coming towards me, awful things being said about our daughters on social media, and these people remained silent. And, and as time went on, I, was, I had a job to do, but I was also getting angrier all the time and, and feeling more betrayed. What, what was it that really drove your anger? What drove my anger was that these folks, my fellow Republicans, were not standing up, not having the courage to tell these people that what they were saying was lies. They were going along with it. They were allowing these folks to attack us. When you say people stood silent, rank and file Republican elected officials. Absolutely. Who didn't agree with what Trump was saying, but they were afraid to criticize him. Well, that's right. That's the thing is so many of these people, they've come up to me, they've come up to my colleagues over the last couple of years and said, we're with you. Keep doing what you're doing. Stand strong. You know, that's what they would whisper in our ears. But they've not been willing to say that publicly. Did you feel your life was in danger? We, we certainly had uh, different uh, uh, evenings, days, where we felt that way. Our address was, was put out there on the internet so people knew where we lived. We had had situations where folks put leaflets in our, our mailbox and our neighbors' mailboxes saying, you know, Bill Gates is your... Uh, is your neighbor here, and he is, um, uh, you know, he's a bad person, essentially. What did your wife say about that? She saw what was going on with me, personally. She saw how angry I was becoming. I'm generally a pretty mild-mannered guy. I was becoming angrier, I was becoming distracted, and I wasn't the husband and, and father that I once was, quite frankly. And you finally sought treatment. So um, in early 2022, I was attending a funeral for our county attorney. She had passed away. And I saw a lot of the folks there at this funeral who I felt, you know, had lost their way, had not supported us on the board. And I, I, I became very angry. There have been a couple other events where I was having problems controlling my anger at public events. My wife was with me and she said, you got to stop this. You need to get help. And, and that's when I decided to go in therapy, and, and it made all the difference in the world for me. And your therapist said that you were showing signs of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. She was, and I got to tell you, it embarrasses me to use that term because to me that's, you know, someone who was a first responder who dealt with a tragic event or a soldier has PTSD. I don't, I don't feel like what I've dealt with deserves that label, but that's, that's what I've been told. I've dealt with trauma, something that you don't expect in elected office. And here's the thing, this isn't about me. It's about all the elections officials, hundreds, thousands across the country who are dealing with these death threats. What do you think national leaders of the Republican Party should do about the conspiracy theories, about the threats that people like you and, and election officials all across the country have faced? 
I think that if they raised their voices and said, look, we can have disagreements within the party. This is a big tent. That's fine. But death threats are, are out of the, you know, they're not allowed. Those are out of bounds. Or questioning people saying that they're treasonous uh, or that they're rigging elections. There's no evidence of that. These elections in Maricopa County in particular in 2020 and 2022 were the most scrutinized, I would argue, probably in the history of the world. And there was no there there. So it's time to move on. Uh, it's time to focus on 24 and, and the future of this, this country. Our thanks to Bill Gates for sharing his story with us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.